There we go. Uh, last night I listened to about, uh, I don't know, five or six of uh, my talks to you guys. And uh, it's, it's uncanny how many times uh, I say things like this. It's so good to be on the call with a bunch of good guys like you. I, I really, you know, good morning, gentlemen. I just really enjoy doing this with you. And, and I was thinking, why, why do I really enjoy doing this? Because I want to help people who want help. And when you get up stinking at, you know, 6.15 and, you know, get the sleep out of your eyes and pull up to some computer or phone or whatever to be here, I respect that a lot. I respect that a lot. And so uh, it's an honor for me to be here and to share with you. And so uh, proud of you for being on this call. And uh, you know, hopefully that God allow me to be an encouragement to you today. So conquering the lust monster. And this is, this is a bigger talk than simply uh, dealing with porn because porn is a subset of, of lust. You know, you can you know, feel that, you know, I've got this all looked, I'm, you know, 300 days clean, but, you know, when you go into a mall, you're like this, you're just, you're checking out people all the time, and, and you still got a job to do, because it got to tighten the sieve, right, we got to deal with those things that are still yet undealt with in the area of uh, handling our lust in a way that honors the Lord, and so, um, so I want to I want to work through this, this discussion here, it's, it's pretty comprehensive, and it's, it's actually, uh, a real core uh, foundational talk moving forward uh, on, on what it looks like um, to, yeah, to just deal with this in a healthy way. So I, 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 I talk just briefly about um, what porn does to you. I, I talk about why porn is such a big problem in the world. And then I actually lay out some of the steps. And when we get into the steps of what you need to do to conquer the lust monster, you know, this is often just a one shot that I have with, you know, 100 men, 300 men or whatever, uh, to how to deal with this. And so a lot of you are going to go check, got that check, got that check, got that. And it'll be an affirmation for some of you who are newer in the journey. It'll be a, oh, my, I got I got a ways to go. And uh, for some of you who've been on this journey for a while, and this will now be the idea that you can help other men with. All right. So, um, so yeah, so let, let's go conquering the lust monster. Um, when lust, the lust monster rules, there's five things that we experience. These are some of the effects of what lust does to the average man, okay? So, so first of all, the word desensitization. Desensitization to sexual stimulation. Pornography actually neuters you. It actually takes away your sexual edge. It actually takes away your, your unique God-given creativity, and it makes you be drawn towards uh, uh, more variety rather than more singularity. Uh, more, uh, it, it, it pulls you away from, uh, from just healthy God-honoring intimacy. And so your uh, matter of fact, um, when it says pornography neuters you, there's all kinds of research that heavy porn addicts actually have a problem with erectile dysfunction. And so uh, when the lust monster rules your life, there is clearly a desensitization to sexual stimulation. Number two, uh, alienation from genuine intimacy. Uh, the more a person's into porn, it doesn't make them a better lover. It makes them more selfish lover. And uh, they, they're more selfish. Uh, they have a, this independent lust that they express elsewhere. They may be chasing porn. They may be chasing uh, other women. They may be chasing experiences. Uh, they may be chasing online. Uh, but they, they're not getting closer to their spouse. Um, the, the porn is a distraction from intimacy. Matter of fact, uh, as we know, uh, the longer a man's into porn, he cuts out relationships. It moves him towards isolation. And so uh, that, that clearly is, is part of the journey. Um, another thing, uh, an effect of the, the lust monster controlling you is cheapening of one's sexual oneness in marriage. Uh, why? Because one of the most predominant things I get is the wife doesn't feel good enough. If you have to keep going to porn, what's wrong with me? Why don't you love me? Why am I not good enough? 
And uh, I have a document. If you've done some work with me, you'll you'll maybe have you know finished it or filled it out with your spouse. But all the different feelings that a woman has shared to me that she feels when her husband goes to porn. And one of the most common ones is not good enough, but it 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 uh, it cheapens the idea of oneness because it's not oneness. It's you're connected to this image and this image and this image, and you try to be connected to your wife, and she wants to be unique to you and so the lust monster actually cheapens the whole sexual oneness uh, in the relationship and number four uh defilement uh what do we mean by that well the the idea of uh you know ma marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure is what it says in hebrews 13 4 and and when i'm uh acting out looking at porn or looking at you know, real women and bringing them into my head to use them later in my own PMO cycle, porn masturbation or lust masturbation orgasm cycle. Um, it defiles the relationship and um, it, it, there's, there's unfaithfulness there and it breaks trust. Listen, some of you guys know all about betrayal and the sense of distrust that your wife has with you because of choices you've made and rebuilding of trust is a hard thing. In some cases, your wife isn't going to be able to do that uh, because of your unfaithfulness. So it defiles what a good marriage is. And finally, uh, the last effect of when the lust monster rules is we experience impairment. Impairment in our walk with the Lord. Spiritually, it stifles us. You know, we when we're when we're persisting with porn and acting out selfishly in these ways, we we, we don't naturally get closer to God. We don't naturally go. This is so good, Lord. Oh, yeah, there's this going on here. But Lord, I'm so good with you. No, it's I don't feel good with you. I don't feel close to you. My spiritual life suffers. I don't feel I want to move towards God. I I feel uh, distant from God. And, and the longer I persist with it, the more I, I, I grow farther, I'm farther away from the Lord. And so those are some of the core things that happen when the lust monster rules my life. And so whether you're single or married, this is a really important journey to go through because these things lessen you as a man. And I call you to greatness to defeat these things. So these don't have the effects in your life. Uh, why is porn exponentially impacting more and more and more and more and more people? Well, obviously accessibility uh, with the, you know, 25 ish years ago when you know, maybe it's 20 ish, but when, when the internet, uh, you know, the World Wide web, www, when, when that, you know, whole phenomenon, uh, started to become accessible, even when it started with the dial up, you know, you know, you're waiting for the phone connection to go, uh, but it, but porn became, uh, more accessible. Matter of fact, uh, have there the reality of ubiquity ubiquity is not a common word but it boy does it nail it ubiquity means simultaneously and everywhere simultaneously everywhere so porn is ubiquitous it is simultaneously everywhere it is everywhere everywhere i go there's porn most people that i work with in this area they're struggling on porn right here on their phone they might I go to a laptop, they might go to a work computer, they might have an iPad at home or something, but they struggle right here on their computer or on their phone. And it's because porn is increasing because the incredible accessibility, accessibility, it's just, it's just available all the time, ubiquitous. Number two, acceptability. Uh, pornography, uh, you know, is is really really mainstream culture now. It's just accepted as this is, you know, and and uh, and of course with this now is is the um, the incredible degeneration of values such that you know uh, you know kids as young as thirteen and fourteen are sending naked pictures or sexual pictures to one another, you know, sexting. Uh, and, and I say that with a little bit of, um, you know, uh, experience with it, because I guess in the last two, two and a half years, I've worked with three families where a 14 or 15 year old, the police are involved 
because, you know, the 14 year old boy talked to his girlfriend, but not a girlfriend yet, but a girl who's, you know, who's a friend of his to, oh, you're so pretty. Can't you just send me a picture? And, you know, la, la, la. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's mainstream, but it's actually illegal to, to have that picture on your phone, young man, because it's child porn when she's only 14. When you solicited, meaning ask her to send it, you actually are guilty of soliciting, encouraging child porn. And when you send it, you're distributing. So you have three felonies in Canada at the age 14. So I've been involved in helping the families in that, but it's, it's so acceptable. It's just, it's just common. Uh, thirdly, an anonymity, um, the accelerated obscurity, so much can be done privately now, right? Um, and especially when parents give a kid a phone, <coughs> you know, at, at 12 or whatever, and don't have any software on it. Uh, kids, kids have isolated or extended privacy and accelerated obscurity. That means they're alone and, and uh, unmonitored. I mean, a person could look at porn as they walk to school in the morning in grade 10, right? I mean, like it's, it's uh, they have data plans and no software. And, uh, and, and so, you know, unlike other addictions, you know, like if I'm, you know, drinking, People can smell it on me and they see it affecting my behavior. Uh, you know, if I am smoking, they can smell it on my breath and, you know, I'm addicted to smoking. They can see it on my fingers and, and certainly, uh, you know, you, 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 a smoker's breath has it were. you know, matter of fact, if you've been with a real chain smoker, they walk up to you and you can smell it on their clothes because the smoke has permeated their clothes. Um, you know, same with, you know, different drugs. You can tell that someone's high. And you see, you know, and even if you want to go to eating disorder, if people, you know, overeat, you can see the effects in their body and their size. And see, see so many of these addictions have visible signs. Pornography doesn't have visible telltale signs uh, until they start trying to have a relationship with a spouse. Um, affordability. Uh, the price is cheap, though the cost is great. Um, you know, there's so much free porn out there, or because it's an, an entry drug, they, they give so much for free, and then it flashes on. If you want to continue to watch this, you have to pay a dollar or something. Well, if a guy's really hooked, he's, he's you know, flashing his card to get, get access to more things. And uh, but but so much is 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 free and just out there in social media or out there in YouTube or other, uh, you know, networks, uh, entry gates. Um, and uh, and so, uh, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't it's not costing people. A lot. Now, I mean, I've worked with families where the kids stole stole the neighbor's credit card and and jacked up $800 in about six weeks on, on porn sites. And of course he got caught because why is grandma Smith next door looking at all this porn and spending $800? Well, she can't find her credit card and they, they backed it up to this location and this website and or sorry, this URL, um, you know, they found where it was coming from and it was the, you know, the 16 year old neighbor had thought to be, you know, he could get away with it. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it is affordable to a, to a point. And then the sheer addictability of it. Porn is growing extensively because, well, you know how hard it is for you to get off it. Like it's not easy to get off of, especially when most young men and women too, because we're starting a group for women who struggle with porn in the fall. Um, but most get hooked, you know, at 11, 12, 13, and, and they're still developing their brain and their brain is still in, in its formation stages. And it's so susceptible to uh, addictive phenomenon. And that's why so many young men and women are addicted to gaming because they're getting into it at, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, and their brain is so uh, intoxicated by the, the, uh, the arousal and all of the 
the electronic images, be it flashing and sounding and scoring and rewards and, and everything. It just, it just plays on the very heart of what makes anything addictable, let alone the biological thing that porn is there, just the overall addictability of it. The power of the draw is just gigantic. And so, so that's why the porn problem continues to accelerate and all the more reason why we need stories of men who have victory over porn. All right, so now this next section here of what are the best steps to conquer the lust monster? This is where you can go through and you can say, good, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that, and you can get a lot of affirmation. And there's also going to be some tips that maybe you haven't done that'd be really good for you to consider doing. Because when I walk into a group of, you know, 300 men and they ask me to talk about conquering the lust monster, I give them this in one shot. They give me an hour. Now, obviously, I'm doing it a lot, lot less time than an hour. I'll try to be a half an hour. But, but the point is, this is an opportunity for you to check how you're doing. And if nothing else, I'm charting the way, I'm pointing the way for you where you can go if you want to conquer the lust monster. And conquering the lust monster is, is way more important because it's bigger than just dealing with porn because it's the whole umbrella problem of just me being a lustful person and how do I handle that in a way that honors God. So um, I got scripture all the way through. Uh, obviously, uh, I don't have time to to uh, to quote them all, refer to them all, but you can, you know, do a thorough cleansing by reading every scripture related to each one. So it starts by facing the issues. Quit compromising, quit lying to yourself, admit your draw towards porn or other lust patterns, and any other sexually uh, inappropriate pursuits uh, that 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 you need help. Just, I got to start by facing it. I got to admit that I have a problem. So, so that's number one. It's interesting. There's guys that come to the group maybe for only six, eight weeks, and they're really not facing the issue. They, 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 in their mind say, well, I'm not as bad as that guy, or, you know, those guys have really got problems. Honey, I don't have a problem like that. And they say things like that. And, and, uh, but they, they don't realize how completely hooked they are um and uh you know usually we can recognize the other addicts and but they're not being open they're lying to themselves and and um anyway so face the issue um number two break the silence um so you imagine me speaking to a group of guys and i i often you know if i speak say on a saturday morning on a men's retreat uh i tell them okay before midnight tonight you got to tell somebody here in, in this room, okay? So there's 300 of us here. I don't care who it is, whether you're going to come to me or your pastor or just another guy that you trust in the group, but you got to break the silence. Because <clears throat> if you break the silence, it's the first step at, at, at breaking the power of the addiction over you. Uh, you got to tell somebody. Um, you got to get fully honest. You got to start stop minimizing. You got to pray with a trusted brother or pastor about your needs and and surrender your life to God as a starting point. But you got to break the silence and start the journey of recovery. At number three, you got to seek forgiveness, asking God to forgive you. The beautiful thing is uh, there isn't a thing that a person has done in this world that God doesn't have the heart and the desire to forgive. The, the death of Jesus Christ covered all sin. And, but we need to go to him and get current with him and confess our struggles and our, and our issues and ask him to start working in us. So, so yes, uh, we need to seek forgiveness and ask the Lord to, uh, to help us move forward. Uh, number four, tell your spouse. Acknowledge past and current failures in this area and share your desire to make changes to honor God and to honor her. Ask for her support and prayer. That's a hard one because when you've heard of this bad and you kind of say, hey, I just need your support. Could you pray for me through this? You know, she'll want to, you know, maybe shoot you. Um, and so be careful uh, on making it about her not being on your prayer team at first. Uh, just, just make it about uh, the fact that you want to make these changes on the Lord. Uh, make no excuses. Confess your struggles and setbacks to her and someone else. You'll see that'll come up soon number five it's really important when you do tell her to validate her pain uh you'll not understand for a long time the extent to which your actions have caused her harm 
it's called partner betrayal trauma for a reason. And, uh, and I just, I just pray that God will allow your empathy gates to warm up and that you'll realize the extent of the hurt that you have caused your, your sweetheart or the hurt that you will cause um, these, you know, your fiance, you single guys. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I just did premarital with five, five couples here this spring. And three of those five couples had a, the guy had a problem with porn that, oh, I've dealt with. I said, hold on, you've been clean. And then I pushed what that meant. I explained it to him. And, and uh, well, you know, I, I think about three weeks, maybe. And so the agreement with all three couples was if there's a relapse, you know, uh, he's going to basically call me back and going to join regroup. And the wife liked that idea that, okay, I'll trust you that you've dealt with this, but you know, I really need to know that it's behind you. And if you relapse, then we got a game plan. And, uh, and so, yeah, validate her pain, uh, engage in battle. It's going to be a fight for freedom. Um, because it is an addiction. Uh, it's also a, a selfish pattern. And, uh, you know, you got to denounce and discontinue any inappropriate behavior. And again, asking God to help you to change it, but it's a battle. And uh, one young man uh, who's, who's in the group, I, I just, just said, do me a favor, give me a year. And let's get this behind us. Let's, let's, let's learn what we need to learn. Let's deal what we need to do. Let's get the handles we need to handle, but let's get it behind us but engage in the battle. And it's a commitment. It's not just, well, you know, show up for three or four weeks, you know, oh, that was good enough. I, I, I got what I needed out of it. No, you didn't. It's not done. Find a wingman. Uh, get a person you can be accountable to and start daily scrutiny of all your, your life, your, your activities and all your sexual battles. You know, do the all clear texting, et cetera. Call for support if tempted. As a matter of fact, call support just because you want to pray for them and encourage them. But uh, yeah, uh, but get a wingman and uh, report in weekly and talk about how you're doing. Uh, clarify your motivation. Uh, again, guys that come to me uh, for counseling, uh, I get them to fill out the rules, uh, sorry, the reasons, uh, the reasons why they, they want to deal with this. And uh, having a strong set of reasons uh, why you want to overcome this um, is is a really good thing so you clarify the motivation by developing you know these reasons and you weigh out what you're going to lose if you continue in this direction and uh, and, and it, it just uh, like we talked about you know passion and purity have to coexist so i have to honor the lord so i need to move towards integrity and purity because that honors the lord and so you get you get your you get your set of reasons you clarify uh what your motivation is going to be uh, cut off accessibility, whatever it is uh, that, that you need to do to block. And most of you, it needs to get covenant eyes on this thing. Uh, but, you know, I've covenant eyes on, on my, this computer here because not one of my 13 grandkids is going to come to my house and accidentally, um, you know, get, get to any questionable sites on any device in this house. I, I love them too much to not let them go unprotected. And matter of fact, uh, Last night, the oldest granddaughter, who's 16, she said to me, Jeepa, that's my, 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 my name, my grandfather, uh, Jeepa. Uh, Jeepa, what's your password here? Um, I, I got to do some schoolwork. Her dad's sitting there beside me, and she's watching the game with me. She's going to do something. And uh, I gave her the password, but I said, do me a favor. Um, uh, we don't give out the passwords to the grandkids, but you're old enough now that your dad and I, we trust you to good sites that you'll go to. But I told her, I said, don't tell the other cousins, don't tell your sisters, you're, you're 16 now. And so I'll let you have the password like an adult. Um, and so, but, but, but accessibility, whether it's covenant eyes or some other one, get one that blocks you from getting to things and get one that reports to someone else about any attempts you have to get to something questionable. Number 10, commit to a recovery group. Um, and uh, that's that band of brothers. Um, men make men. Uh, men don't become men alone usually. We don't get through this alone. Um, remember the opposite of addiction is connection. And so, yeah, ongoing isolation will kill you. you. You need to be open. You need to be accountable. You need to be in a group and work a program. 
And uh, yeah, so really important uh, till you get to a, a long season of sobriety, get in the group, the do the program, stay committed. Rebuild your marriage. Uh, and it's caused a lot of struggles in your marriage, a lot of distrust, a lot of hurt. Uh, it, 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 it has maybe skewed your sex life or hampered it totally. Uh, and it's, it, you know, your wife's filled with a lot of hurt and sometimes it comes out as anger towards you and all that. And uh, don't make it about her reactions, make it about you owning the hurt that you've caused and just begin a journey to make your marriage priority again. And just, uh, you know, as, as, as she will grow in her readiness when she feels loved and that she's a priority, you need to rebuild all areas of your, your marriage, including your sex life. But deepen the friendship, uh, spend time with her, honor her, uh, report in what you're doing in your recovery so that she can you know, you can rebuild trust and she can see that you're really, really working hard. Uh, so rebuild your marriage. Uh, get professional help. Um, you know, if you got to face your addiction first, and then when your spouse is ready, begin the marriage rebuild. But if you're not getting to a place of victory in three months, if you're even coming to regroup, but you're not getting to victory, then you need to get to some counseling before uh, beyond regroup. Um, and, and if the marriage is still in trouble three months after you, you really started to come clean and work on stuff, but it's still struggling, you likely need to get some consistent help for a while um, just, to, just to push through some of the barriers that have been created you know, through, your, through your porn struggle and your unfaithfulness. And so for many, uh, you know, and, and it's kind of like maybe you know, I, I don't know, uh, for some guys, it's, it's, you know, six to eight sessions, uh, it might be, and just to get them going in a good direction. And then they might come back three months later for one or two sessions to work through some other things. But, you know, those are the guys that have been with me through counseling, uh, they can remember, you know, it started here, it ended here. And yeah, it might've been three or four months and I don't know, a dozen sessions or whatever, but it's not a forever. You, there's things that you can work through. And once you've worked through those things, you know, and, and your wife feels good about them, you know, you're, you're, you're getting to the place you need to be. And then, and then finally, and, and certainly not, uh, as they say, last but not least, uh, maybe I put it here just as a reminder how important it is that, that you continue to grow spiritually in all areas. Uh, Bible reading, praying, and it says pray with your wife if she's willing, if she's too hurt by you, and it feels like you're kind of you know, who you think you are. Now you want to pray with me after you were just looking at porn two weeks ago. Don't, don't hurt her with the prayer suggestion, but when she's ready, uh, every, every day, give your life to the Lord and make sure at the end of the day, you're just grateful for uh, making through another day. So that's why we pray in the morning, asking God for strength to make it through the day. And the end of the day, we thank him for another day of sobriety. Um, you know, being in church and getting involved, uh, you know, lead your family well by being an example. Uh, right here, there's lots of key scripture, that scripture, um, recovery scripture that we asked you to read through, uh, those uh, 60 or so verses, uh, you know, there's ones there you can memorize, but there's nothing like having uh, uh, an arm full of scripture that, that you have at a moment's notice that you can just quote when you're tempted, and, uh, and it anchors you. That's what Jesus did when he was tempted. He quoted scripture, not a bad idea, guys, to have a half a dozen really good scripture memorized. And if you don't have that, why not? Like, it's not like you got to memorize a new scripture every week for the rest of your life. No, get five that really have to do with, you know, I mean, Job 31, one, I've made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman. There, you just memorize scripture. Right. And, and, you know, me from hearing all these talks, I, I have a lot of scripture memorized. Matter of fact, in the eighties, uh, when the, the, the cold war was still on and, and there was, uh, you know, you couldn't come and go in and out of some of the communist countries and you certainly couldn't, you know, take scriptures in to uh, certain of those countries. And, uh, I was, uh, uh the, the organization was called brother Andrew. 
and uh, you were going in as a visitor to the country, and your goal was to smuggle Bibles in to give to pastors and leaders in, in these communist countries. And uh, I remember thinking, uh, well, I, I could, you know, I was interacting with them, but, you know, I had two young kids, and do I risk doing that because I could get put in jail? And I tell you this story because if I was put in jail and had a pencil, how much scripture could I write on the walls of my prison cell? I decided I'm going to memorize enough scripture so if I get locked in a prison cell, I can fill the whole four walls, ceiling, and floor with writing out scripture all over the thing. I'm confident, guys, I could fill a prison cell with writing scripture on the walls. Why? Because I believe in the importance of hiding God's word in my heart that I will not sin against him. Psalm 119, uh, verse 9, and uh, yeah, and so uh, verse 11, rather, 9 to 11 is the passage I usually quote, and so I'll obviously continue to read Christian books on spiritual growth, Christian books on recovery, watch videos, podcasts on recovery, uh, that's likely more involved with the being part of a group and, you know, working the recovery program, enjoying the battle. So, so guys, you've got a, a splash of, of what recovery looks like. You've got a pretty comprehensive look at it. And so, um, you know, uh, 13 things, uh, how you doing on those 13? Uh, 13 things, which are the ones that you're struggling with the most you haven't even begun on? Because um, uh, that's a comprehensive look at, at how to conquer the lust monster. And so I pray, guys, that that will be an encouragement for you. And so let's talk about it.